This program was recorded before the Sandinistas lost the elections of February 1990. I sent over a paper to the State Department uh, for the, their press rep, the Hiding Carter, you know, the guy that speaks out every day on, on world events, uh, to read. And I had four paragraphs in it because the situation was changing that night. And I said, you know, with a note, call us before you go on the air in the morning, I'll tell you which paragraph to read. And they were all four totally false. Hmm. And, and they, as a matter of fact, they called in the morning and I said, you know, paragraph three, and they read paragraph three and, and went with it, you know, which is utter complicity in putting out the, the propaganda, the disinformation. So that was the CIA giving the information to the State Department to put out on uh, our media? Yeah. The CIA has salted its agents throughout the Congress, every committee. Uh, and it's done this, you know, it did it three decades ago, and we're seeing it once again, but it's standard. But we did have, in November of, of 75, we had the CIA director, Bill Colby, who had been putting out our, our propaganda line to the Senate, our, our lies, uh, was tied up on a trip or something. And so Bill Nelson, the deputy director of operations, went over to stand in for him. And he said before he went, I'm not going to lie. And, and he just flat said it in a staff meeting. He said, I'm retiring in three weeks, and I'll be damned if I'm going to spend my retirement answering perjury charges. So he went over there and told the truth. Now, Ambassador uh, Mulcahy said one thing, and then Nelson testified and said exactly the opposite. And so they had a direct head-to-head con -head contradiction. And so the senators nailed Mulcahy. One of you gentlemen is lying. And so Mulcahy asked for the, the opportunity to speak again, <laughs> in which he clarified his statements and, and told the truth. But the interesting thing was that that testimony refuted everything else we had been saying for three months. They did not investigate and follow up on it and, and indict, uh, especially Bill Colby, for perjury, which they could have on the basis of that. They just let it, you know, let it go. There was no follow-up to it. The CIA lies and manipulation of the press the CIA penetration of Congress, congressional cover-ups, mass media cover-ups. These are some of the subjects we'll feature tonight with John Stockwell, former CIA official, and with a documentary highlighting the subjects. Tonight on Alternative Views. <laughs> program was recorded the 10th of June, 1987. Welcome back to Alternative Views. The centerpiece of tonight's program will be a special documentary about the CIA and the mass media. We've talked about this a lot of times on Alternative Views, particularly with John Stockwell, who was with the CIA for 13 years. And John, you appear in this documentary about the media and the CIA. How did this documentary come to be made? I was passing through London on my way to Vietnam and called a friend at Diverse Productions. Actually called them from the States before we you know, got to London. And uh, they had some ideas and researched it before I got there. And, but you, you know, what, what makes it work so good is you know, who has actually run Western or United States disinformation campaigns, you know? Who can say, here's how it's done, here's how we did it, with proof, the articles in the paper of our results. The emphasis of this documentary is about the CIA and the media. But there is a larger framework in this, too, which we've talked about in our program uh, from time to time. And that is 
the overall lying of the State Department, the White House, is this a coordinated thing, or do all these organizations just uh, do their lying separately and it adds up to one big falsehood? Read Noam Chomsky's Turning, of, Turning the Tide it, uh, to get a feeling for, for the, the way our, you know, it's what they call the establishment in the 60s, the way they are committed, the elites that run the country, which includes the State Department and the CIA and presidents and politicians, uh, they have a charter, you know, to run the country in their interests. And this means that they, they not exactly lockstep, but they just presume to have the right to mislead people. It's part of the way the United States is, and God knows most other countries as well. They are not bound by honesty and integrity. Watching these hearings before Congress now, uh, you, you really get this, I mean, what is the point, as the senators were asking of, of Elliot Abrams, you know, what is the point of asking you any questions at all, because you're going to lie. And Abrams is, you know, is just lying. Well, what's the point of asking the CIA anything in hearings? Their whole ethic is they're doing illegal things, and they're, you know, they teach you from the first day in training cover stories, and you practice them at length, and the director practices them, and when he briefs the Congress, he does the cover stories. Uh, White House staffers are not trained professionally, but there it's in the ethics of politics, ethics of the business. They're putting out a myth about the world, a myth about the United States' nature. Uh, Chomsky uh, notes that the compelling force, the ethic against which all foreign policy decisions are made, is defense of the fifth freedom. You know, the four freedoms were Roosevelt and Churchill in, in January of 41. We were fighting the war for the freedom of speech, uh, freedom of religion, freedom from want, freedom from fear. And the fifth freedom is what, you know, has compelled our actions in reality uh, then and ever since. And that's fr uh, the United States' freedom to rob, exploit, and kill. <laughs> and every, you know, every situation is measured by our right, our our imperial right it's not a divine right but our imperial right any any country that tries to break away from from this control uh like vietnam either you bring them back in or you destroy them so much that they won't be an example to anyone else and this is what's happening in nicaragua they want to bring it back in by ousting the sandinistas failing that they want to crush the country so it, it can't be an example to anyone. Cuba, they haven't quite succeeded either way, but so they just try to discredit it. In relationship to the lying and the coordination, and of course, John was on uh, either the National Security Council or a subcommittee of the National Security Council. I was working for a subcommittee of the National yeah, Security Council. During the Angolan operation. Yeah. So there is one area where different people from different parts of the executive branch meet, and then, of course, they meet in cabinet meetings. Were media strategies and lying discussed ever at these meetings? For sure. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. So there is some coordination as well as it being a consensus of how things are really going. One to example run. I cite in, in my In Search of Enemies book is, is one day I sent over, you know, we, I was, I was doing it, at, but you know, under their supervision, I sent over a paper to the State Department uh, for the, their press rep, the Hiding Carter, you know, the guy that speaks out every day on, on world events, uh, to read. And I had four paragraphs in it because the situation was changing that night. And I said, you know, with a note, call us before you go on the air in the morning. I'll tell you which paragraph to read. And they were all four totally false. Hmm. And, and they, as a matter of fact, they called in the morning and I said, you know, paragraph three. And they read paragraph three and, and went with it, you know, which is utter complicity in putting out the, the propaganda, the disinformation. So that was the CIA giving the information to the State Department to put out on yeah. our media. Yeah. Yet there's a contradiction here. Some people like Elliot Abrams get caught lying. They get in trouble. And it's even possible their whole careers can be broken. Did you ever discuss the dilemmas of lying and the schizophrenia? On one hand, you're supposed to be telling the truth. On the other hand, you're systematically lying. Did those kinds of issues ever come up? There's a little bit of that. Uh, basically, you know, the, the congressmen and senators are not holier than thou when it comes to lying because they do the same <laughs> thing all the time. Uh, but still, it is perjury. I mean, when a senator makes a false statement or in his speeches before, that's not perjury. That's the debate in them. But, but when you're in another branch of the